What's up everyone? Welcome back to Living by the F Word. No formal introduction today, just gonna get right into it. I wanted to share with you this spread that I did with a new Oracle deck that I got, which is a very well-known Oracle deck, the Work Your Light Oracle by uh, Rebecca Campbell, and the artwork is by Danielle Noel. Now I did do an unboxing of this video, so if you're interested in what the entire deck looks like, that will be coming at some point. I am going to be introducing Tarot, Oracle, and Lenormand cards, including uh, some information to teach you about them and unboxings and flip throughs and all that stuff. So that will be coming. So if you are interested in what they all look like, that is going to be sometime soon. But I just wanted to show you this because this was the spread that I and wanted to show you in my last video when I was kind of updating you as to w what was going on in my life. There was just like so many things going on, so many outside factors and a lot, a lot was going on. And so I decided to work with this uh, deck and, you know, I normally wouldn't do uh, this large of a spread when I'm first trying to get to know a deck or like connect with it. But as I looked through the book and, you know, they suggest some spreads in here, I saw the Cosmic Cross spread, which is really, uh, really um, similar to a Celtic Cross spread and a relationship spread. In fact, I have this Beginner's Tarot book here that's pretty much based on all the... Rider Waite Smith imagery, but there's a spread in here that this is the Celtic cross, which it's similar, but it's it's not exactly like this. But then they also have in here, which I've used a lot, the relationship spread, which is also pretty similar. And so that's what this kind of reminded me of, except for it had an extra card over here to the side and the orientation of this card was a little different, but for the most part, uh, you know, pretty similar. And so I, that's why I kind of wanted to do that and try it out and just see what these cards were trying to tell me. And this was the first time I really ever used the deck because I just got it. So I did a one card pull to start and it was this one, which is Akasha, your guidance is divinely guided. So that was like a great card to start off with, in my opinion, because it just seems like this individual is walking towards all this light, all this color, all this, you know, beautiful flowing, you know, imagery, in my opinion. Now, there's still stuff flowing down here, but it's gray. It's like black and white. So just based off of like my first impression, you know, this person is walking away from all that. And so when you look up in the guidebook, and I kind of go into this in the unboxing, but there's five suits. And so that particular card is from the fifth suit, which is a transmission card. And it's the first transmission card. So, you know, like I said, walking, you know, they're walking away, they're transitioning into something different. And that's pretty much how I feel right now with everything going on. You know, I thought I finally got this set up where it was going to focus right. And it's just, there we go. Um, so yeah, sorry. But yeah, trans transmission card, right? Transit, walking, moving, you know, transformation. That's kind of like what I was thinking. And it says your guidance is divinely guided, which... You know, just, it's almost like just trust the universe, just trust everything that's going on. And so when you look up, oops, in the guidebook, for that particular card, There's, in the book, what's great is, you know, it tells you, it tells you what the card's about, and then there's like a, tra like a transmission where you could hold the card to your heart and state something. And so, 
this card basically um, is talking about while we have free will, there are also points on the timeline of our lives that are president, president, presidented or pre-planned soul contracts or agreements that were made before incarcerating. It could be a company you chose to work for, a relationship you planned to have, or a person you agreed to mentor or help. Whatever it is, know that it is divinely guided and will not bypass you. So, you know, there's a lot more to it, and I'm not going to go super in-depth on each card because it will be a really long video. But basically, what I got from this one card pull before I decided to do this larger spread was, okay, like, it, everything's going to be okay. Like, just trust the universe, you know, everything happens for a reason, and that's, like, really pretty much how I feel. So I was like, okay, that's a great overall card, over, you know, overall general card. Okay, so then we have, let's see here. I'm actually gonna take my journal out because I did journal a page. This is my new tarot and Oracle and Lenormand uh, journal that I'm gonna be starting. And so I'm just gonna have this off to the side because it'll be easier than going back and forth with this uh, guidebook here. So let's see. So car so the question, first of all, that I asked the spread, because this spread is called the Cosmic Cross. It's a layout that is great when you are looking for more detailed guidance. And I kind of felt like everything was just falling apart in my life, which is what I talked about in my last video, where I kind of just gave you like a channel update and everything going on in my life. It was just kind of one thing after another. And I felt like I was falling really behind on my content and I knew I wanted to do some new content ideas and I just didn't really know if it was the right move or not. And so I decided to ask this particular deck with this particular spread, you know, is everything I'm thinking about as far as my podcast launching, as far as introducing cards to my channel, all that stuff, you know, is that the right direction? Let's see what it says because there's specific questions. So position one, where are you in the present time? So this is position one. And the first card, yes, just say yes. And so I actually laughed when I pulled that card because I was like, oh, that's really funny, you know, because lots of times, not just myself, but a lot of people, they have doubts and they tell themselves no, or they, you know, find a way to create patterns that they want to go after something and they say no. And so <laughs> to have that whole spread to say, where are you in the present time? Just say yes. Like just start saying yes and stop thinking about this crap. Just move forward. And when you actually look it up in the guidebook, this is a card, it's a confirmation card. So it's suit one, a confirmation card, okay? And when you, when you look at it, like I just laughed so hard, the book, it's just a ton of yeses. And it says, don't overthink, just say yes. So this was a great way to start this spread out because it was just like that confident boost that I needed. I mean, imagine if it was the no card, like how different this spread or, or thought process may have came out, you know? So that was like an amazing card to start off with. Card two is what your soul is calling you to do. Okay, so that's this one that's positioned here. Okay, so I got... Keepers of the earth. I really was hoping I had sorted out the focusing. I really need to figure out like what works for these videos because I watch other channels and like their cameras focus perfectly when they bring it up to the camera. Like their autofocus is like amazing. There we go. Um, so yeah, I got Keepers of the Earth. Just moved it and messed it up again. You are not alone. Ancient ancestors stand beside you. Okay. So that is what your soul is calling you to do. So like at first glance, 
it just may, for me at least, at first glance, what my soul is, you know, telling me to do is just, you know, trust uh, that that I have, you know, guidance and people with me, basically, to go after what I want to go after. But I'm going to, I'm going to read you what it says in here. Let's see. So keepers of the earth. Oops. I'm trying to find what suit it's in. Hello. <laughs> Why can't I find the table contents? There it is. Okay. Uh, okay. So, hold on a second. Let's see here. See, these cards aren't numbered, so they're divided by suit, but there's no numbers for you to figure out what suit they're in unless you're, like, super familiar with them. So I apologize for that this is taking so long. Um, let's see. Okay, Keepers of the Earth. So this is an activation card. So suit four, activation card. Okay, so what your soul is calling you to do, and the first line is, you are so supported. Do... You do not stand alone. You have a magnific magnificent team of helpers, both in this world and of the earth, who are here to help you every step of the way. Call upon them for assistance. They are here to help. The keepers of the earth acknowledge the work that you have done already and are ready to work through. They bow at your feet and thank you for wanting to stand with them, to devote your life to protecting the earth in your unique way. It is time to increase your capacity to receive support in the physical realm. This can come in the form of financial abundance, acts of service from strangers, or people flocking to help you and your work. The only thing that is stopping you right now is your capacity to receive support. You deserve to be rewarded for the work that you are doing. You do not need to go at it alone. Call upon the keepers of the earth to help you and your mission. Open your heart and your mind to receive more than you could ever thought possible. What support do you need? Call it right away. So the work your light activation quote is, which you're supposed to hold it to your chest, which I had already done this when I originally did it on my own. But the quote is, I am open to receiving a whole new level of support for my life and my work, and I call it now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so, you know, as far as what is your soul calling you to do, I think that's just, you know, you know, following my heart as far as, you know, this channel and what I want to talk about and how I want to incorporate different types of animation in my other videos, most likely not within the, the cards videos, but you know, other informational videos where I talk about festivals or flying or whatever, going after this podcast that I've been thinking about for way too long, you know, just knowing that I do have support and, you know, just I'll have help along the way with my mission. So that like aligned with the yes card like was like really powerful to me. I was like, okay, like this is pretty cool. Especially since this is the first time I opened this deck. All right, so then we have card number three. What is rising in you? And I got the crumbling what are you clinging on to? And this tarot, uh, this reminds me, this Oracle card reminds me so much of the tarot card, the tower. I mean, I instantly thought the crumbling and the tower with the lightning, come on, like that is, okay, so that could, you know, obviously I'm going to look up what it means for this deck, but immediately with my own intuition, I thought of the tower and that is basically either shit's going to hit the fan like in a bad way or in a really good way like you are your whole foundation is about to be reset and everything is about to be like this major change is what I got from that just upon first look 
And when you look it up, let's see what suit it is. The crumbling is suit two and it's inquiry cards. Okay, so let's see. Okay, once again, this is what is rising in you. So what is rising in me? There is a shift happening right now where anything inauthentic can no longer survive. Relationships, jobs, social structures, anything built on shaky ground is destined to tumble down. It's happening to bring you back home to who you truly are, both individually and, uh, and to society as a whole. So you can live a life that is in alignment with who you truly are. When you're in the thick of it, it can feel like a personal attack from the universe. Having faith, have faith because the difficult times will be your defining moments. You will be reborn in the fire. Are you being called to surrender, to stop trying to hold it all together, to loosen your grip, to let the crumbling occur? It may be difficult at first, but in the end, the sooner you let go, the sooner the rebirthing will occur. What are you trying to hold together? What are you doing your best to avoid? How are you trying to pretend everything is okay? You have what it takes to allow what is falling away to tumble and fall. Once the tower has crumbled, you will be able to rebuild your home on solid ground with mighty foundations and a view that is so magnificent that it will take your breath away each new morn. Okay, and so the inquiry is what are you clinging to for the fear of nothing coming to take its place. So for that, for that position, what is rising in you? Basically it's like, okay, yo, like accept this change, accept that you are getting furloughed, accept that the, that the universe wants you to move in the direction you were always destined to be, which was share your passions and creativity for so long. I have like prolonged doing that. I started my brand so long ago and I never really took it seriously. You know what I mean? And so I think it's just like this major shift. And that's what that's what's rising in me is that at first I was upset about the furlough, but now I'm seeing it as, okay, good. I'm going to have a break from that so that I could focus on some other sources of income and creativity and passion and get my life together. Okay, so now we have position four, what is falling away? And I got get grounded, empaths, highly sensitive, connect with nature. Okay, so that's position four, what is falling away? And at first I was kind of like, what is falling away? Get grounded, in my opinion, I felt like I should be getting grounded, you know, like I should be meditating more. I should be getting myself grounded. So why is this a card that's falling away? So then I went to the guidebook to see what that meant. And it kind of made a little bit more sense. So let's see. It's hard to find when you don't know. Okay. So it's another action ca card. Suit three, but it's hard to find when you, since I'm not used to this deck yet. Okay, so you're being called to get grounded to ensure that your luminous field is clear and your inner well is full. If you're not grounded, it is all too easy to get swept up in other people's energy and mistake it for your own. Your boundaries will become blurred as you are absorbing the energies around you and struggling to define what is their stuff and what is yours. If you pull this card, you are very likely an empath or highly sensitive person. Yes, I am. Hello. And need time alone to fill up your well, balance your energy and get grounded. There are two types of people, those who draw their energy from others and those who draw their energy from within. Reflect on which one you are and carve out time each day to ensure your well is being replenished. Being sensitive to a superpower, but like all powers, it needs to be nurtured in order to be fulfilled. It is easy to get 
swept up in the high frequency energies that are swirling around the planet. The quickest and most effective way of clearing all this from your field is ground, is ground yourself by connecting with Mother Earth. There are many ways to get grounded. One of the most powerful ones is to practice earthing by connecting to the power of Mother Earth. Spend time in nature, put your hands on a tree, or walk barefoot on the earth. And the, the, the work your light action is do something to get grounded and connect with the earth. So now this particular one is what is falling away. And so at first, you know, like I said, I was confused, but then it totally makes sense when it's talking about being a highly sensitive person and absorbing all of these other outsources and people's emotions. I mean, it was just such a crazy week for me that I felt like I was absorbing like both of my parents' issues, you know, by talking to them. I was absorbing everything going on in the world and everyone else's feelings at work as far as, you know, basically they're all in a negative light right now because we're getting, we're losing our, our quote unquote dream job, you know? And so now it's like, what now? And so the way I see this is what is falling away is let go of feeling like you need to absorb and take care of everyone else's problems. Just let it go and go on your own path. Sorry, this isn't focusing. I get so frustrated that I can't get this to work the way I want it to. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, it's so annoying. There we go. So anyways, yeah, it's another issue I'm trying to work through with doing these card unboxings and these these card, you know, spreads and showing you is, is trying to figure out a system where this works focusing. I'm having a lot of difficulty. That's another, that's something for another day though. Okay. So now we move on to position five, which is the soul, soul gifts. Okay. And what I got is Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Um, okay. So it's Irma, I believe it's called, and it says, what are you being called to journey to? I might have to put this on manual focus real quick. Let's see if I can. Okay. Hopefully this will work now. So yeah, this was position five, soul gifts. What are you being called to journey to? And so instantly I'm like, yes, like everything that I've been talking about that I've been wanting to do for so long, podcast, talking about cards on my channel, uh, you know, just talking about even doing the Burning Man series, you know, all these things are such massive projects that, you know, it's like, I'm very like scatterbrained, like, where do I start? What do I do? Oh my God. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know just lose myself in overthinking and it's just like totally ridiculous you know and so when you think about what my soul gifts are like it's like I feel like yeah I'm gifted in creativity I signed up for a new class so that I could learn after effects and hopefully make my videos that are going to be educational more dynamic and interesting to watch and I just feel like I'm hoping it's gonna like you know bring out my unique style as far as my YouTube channel. And so that's kind of what I'm being called to. And let's see what it says. See now the only downside of having manual focus on is then right now, everything is out of focus unless I focus it. But yeah, work in progress guys, bear with me. <laughs> if you're still with me. Okay. So Let's look it up. So this is a, another transmission card, which what are your soul gifts? It's kind of like, okay, maybe I'm getting furloughed for a reason. 
Am I great with customer service? Absolutely, I've been doing it my entire life. But was that what I was truly called to do? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it really is not. And so this card is saying like, what, what is your, you know, soul, your soul gift? Oh, it's not a transmission card. I'm sorry. It's a activation card. So suit for activation card. So yeah, I mean, still activating. Let's see. Um... So, let's see if I put this. This is the only thing I hate about the, the whole manual focus thing is, and I'm just hoping that it stays, that I keep my hand there. So the Celtic word, Imrama, which I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, means a journey of the soul. A voyage on which we don't know where we are going, but our soul knows the way. If you pulled this card, you are either being called on a soul journey or are already on one. And it could be to a physical ancient place or metamorphic. When we journey to places that our soul remembers, a shift takes place both within us and in the planet as well. You are being called to journey to a place that is sacred to your soul. Perhaps it is to journey to the world's sacred sites or called to cross the country, climb a mountain, lie on the desert floor, or drink from an ancient well. There are places to see and old friends to meet. I see spontaneous pilgrimages in your future. If a physical voyage isn't possible, journey through the portal of your heart. Follow the invisible soul trail and be willing, and be willing to explore. Maybe read a book or watch a movie about a sacred time or place, or perhaps you are being called to study an ancient lineage or body of work. Whatever your circumstances, your soul is ready to journey deep. And so the work your light activation saying is, may seeds of light a long, long ago planted begin to rise. I am ready to remember ancient secrets from lands that my soul knows from times past. May I be held by the ancient lineages that my soul has served and remember that I don't have to do it all alone. So for me, this journey is back to places, you know, of my heart that have always been a part of my life. And that's creativity and being a creator and art, you know, skill set basically is what I got from, from that. And, you know, also teaching like, I really like to, you know, be a part of someone's experience and teach. And so that's why I think combining the teaching and the creativity with all of my favorite passions in life on YouTube is the direction I really need to be going in. And so those are my soul gifts. And that's what I need to do is follow my heart. So really, so far, you know, as you could tell, super interesting spread. Like I was like really kind of like, whoa, this is like so cool. All right. So the next position is card six. And it's what is being manifested. And I got Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the su Subtle Realms. And it looks like a pretty kind of religious card to me. I'm going to bring it up to you guys. There's a lot of religious figures in this card. Um, so I was kind of like, okay what is being manifested interesting what could what could this mean but the first thing that i noticed regardless of the figures was the alignment i mean there's it's clear alignment in my opinion i mean yes there's like scattered you know stars but like the first thing my eye went to was that line of alignment in the in the stars so let's see what it has to say what is being manifested and we have a card from the activation car card suit which is suit four 
Council of Light, page 94. And let me get this up here for you guys. All right. So the Council of Light is a team of beings who are here to assist the raising of consciousness of the planet. They are here to help you achieve your soul mission and are guiding you every step of the way. However, because we live in a world where free will reigns, they cannot help you without your permission. If you would like their assistance, it is time to ask them. They can help with all kinds of requests. Nothing is too big or too small. Think of them as your personal team of helpers in the spirit realm. They are willing and ready to step in and get to work. What would you like help with? What tasks would you like to delegate to them? The Council of Light is a team of ascended masters, light beings, angels, and guides devoted to rising of earth and all humanity. If you are a light worker, it is from them that you receive your personal mission. Like a spirit world, United Nations, they want to thank you so much for doing this work and devoting your life to uplifting the planet. Pray to them for ch clarity and guidance regarding your personal mission. Put in your requests and let them get to work. And the activation quote is, Council of Light, I am ready to receive your help for fulfilling my personal dharmic mission. Thank you for guiding me with clarity every step of the way and for sending me helpers and experiences that delight my mind, body, and soul. So that's position six, what's being manifested. Pretty clear that basically I'm guided in the end. I need to just follow my soul mission in life, which is everything I've been talking about. I'm trying not to be so repetitive. You know, these types of videos are kind of hard to do because it's not until you sit down and start editing them that you're like, oh, okay, I said that a majillion times. <laughs> Obviously, majillion is not a word, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so now we have position seven, which is kind of out of the, out of the picture down here. And that is what the next step is okay so what the next step is and let me find it for you okay so it's suit five it's a transmission card so what's the next step And I got Lee Maria, creating heaven on earth. It's happening. It's all happening. <laughs> so what's the next step? Creating my own heaven on earth, creating the life I truly was meant to live, you know, not allowing these so-called negative things going on in my life to affect me. And basically, you know, just creating my own happiness and heaven on earth is basically what I got from this as far as what the next step is. Let me get the guidebook out. Okay. Lemuria, or Mu, is one of the Earth's lost lands, where heaven really was a place on Earth, a time before we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. In Lemuria, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, so sorry. Life worked in harmony, all beings were seen as equal, and we were deeply reverent to Mother Earth. Reverent. I'm a really bad reader, so I'm not sure what the proper term is I'd have to look that up but we knew that a mosquito was no worse than us and the sun no better perhaps you too believe that heaven really can be a place on earth perhaps you are part of a transition team who at soul level are devoted to creating this kind of harmony on the planet now thank you for wanting to do this work it's easy to get overwhelmed by the state of affairs on the planet right now 
but you are being encouraged to keep holding and clear the vision of the future. It's so much closer than you think. So it says you may be guided to hold the frequency of Lemuria in your own community, family, workplace, or within yourself. Just know that it is possible. And while at times it may feel like you are alone, you truly are not. There are hundreds of thousands who hold the codes to this ancient lost land and even Lemuria crystals that hold the codes of remembering that are beginning to rise all over the planet. Keep doing what you're doing and remember the only way to heal the world around us is to first heal ourselves. And then it says the transmission is I hold the codes of Lemuria and believe that heaven really can be a place on earth. What a beautiful card. I love this deck. Okay, so that's what the next step is. Then we get to Cardi, which is past life influence. And I got the pillar of light. Your vibration is rising. You are the Oracle. And I'll show you close up in just a second. I just want to pull it up on the book here. So past life influence. Your vibration is rising. Pillar of light. It's another activation card. 102. So, I mean, if I really wanted to dive deeper into this, which I might with my journal here, I might see, like, how many activation cards did I get overall? You know, what was the what was the majority suit within this spread? You know, was it transmission or was it activation? Like, if it's majority of activation cards, then I need to start taking action more, which I know is the truth. You know what I'm saying? So, that's going to be something I'll probably work on in my journal. Um, but this is really how I work with cards. I really, you could really, you could really dissect things. You could either just read them for what they are. You can, the best thing about Oracle cards is trusting your intuition and just seeing like what you see first because Oracle cards are very free form. So they're not structured like Lenormand and Tarot where, you know, things can, I don't know, there's, those systems are a little bit more complex and straightforward, whereas this is very free range and, you know, diving deep into your soul, basically, when you're working with Oracle cards. And so you could really dissect, I mean, you could do it, obviously, with the other systems, too. That's the best part about cards is studying them and writing in your journal and just really dissecting things. But, sorry, I just went on a whole tangent, but I basically just, like, I'm so excited to share this stuff with you because I think it's so interesting. So, um, anyways, back to card eight, past life influence. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, because I was looking up what suit it was. That's why I went on that whole tangent because I wanted to, you know, I think it will be good to see, you know, you know, what type of, you know, majority of the cards I got with this reading. Okay, I'm having trouble finding, let's see, finding, there it is, Pillar of the Light. Okay, so this is the card. Okay. Your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. You are heaven and earth in perfect expression. And then it says, time to meditate. Imagine yourself as a pillar of light connecting the light of the heavens above with the earth. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to like skim through this because already I'm like, this whole video is going to be so long again. Um, let's see. It's basically saying do not look for guidance outside for all you hold all the wisdom of the entire universe in the portal of your heart in every cell of your body do not in every cell of your body so it's basically saying you know 
Stop looking for outside influences. Stop getting advice from people. Just follow your heart. You are the oracle. You are your own guide. Is basically what, in summary, what this pillar of light card means. It just basically, you know, it says you are the rainbow bridge. You are the pillar of light. So you are the connection to what you want, you know, as far as raising your vibration, I guess. So that's what that card is. Okay, now we have card nine, what you need to know. Okay, what you need to know. And I got unbound, releasing soul patterns, contracts, and past lives. Now this is one of some of the cards in this deck, like don't have as much as the aquas and blues, purples and pinks. This is one of them, you can tell. It's like more grayscale, neutral, I guess you could kind of see it as like more of a, uh, I don't know, not, I don't want to say a bad card at all. That's not the right term I'm looking for, but just like kind of like a warning almost. And so for this to, to say what you need to know, release soul patterns, contracts, and past lives, it's basically like release all the shit that's not serving you. Release all your doubts, release everything that you think is not possible release the ideas of you're taking on too much if you want to do a podcast your youtube channel and take a new class in after effects like release all that shit because you can do it and it is possible like you just have to stop saying that you can't and you have to just like start you know moving forward with everything and yeah release old patterns right so let me pull it up for you what the actual Let's see. Um, the one thing I will say now that I'm doing this on camera, which I didn't say in the unboxing, is it's really hard to figure out where the cards are. I guess they're in, they're in alphabetical order by suit, but if you don't know what suit they're in, then it's really hard to find. Okay, so this is an activation card. I feel like I have a lot of activation cards. There's action cards, there's activation cards, transmission cards, confirmation cards, inquiry cards, and yeah, I feel like I have a lot of activation cards. Okay, so Unbound, 108. Okay, so it is time to release old soul stories that have been playing out in your life. They are coming up to be healed. There's never been a safer time to clear these patterns than right now. Take a look at patterns in your life that you are ready to release. Ancient vows and contracts that your soul made that have an ex expiry date. It could be a vow of silence or of poverty or of basically anything in my opinion, which is what I was saying before. It is time to unwind from them. This is the life in which you free yourself from trauma of lives past. What old ways of being have an expiry date? When you name them, you claim them and they stop holding power over you. When acknowledging these old patterns, it is also important to acknowledge how they have served you up until now. For example, a soul pattern is playing small, caused by a soul fear of being seen or sharing your voice would have served you by keeping you safe. In order to grow, you now need to soften by receiving and calling in support. It is time to unbind from the old ways of being that are no longer sustainable. And the activation quote is, I release all old soul stories, vows, Contracts and patterns that are no longer aligned with who I came here to be in the present time. I carry the lessons, growths, and gifts, but I no longer choose to live the same story. May I be unbound, unbound, forever unbound. Whew, what I need to know. That's, I mean, totally, totally, totally something that I feel like... <laughs> So, wow. Okay. We have two more cards left. Okay. And so now we're on to position 10, which is 
hopes and fears, which I think is so interesting that hopes and fears are together in one card or in one meaning of what this card is trying to tell you, you know, because I mean, I guess they do go hand in hand, but at the same time, you know, fears are usually what keeps you from your goals and your hopes. So it's kind of interesting that this card position is hopes and fears. And when I got this one, I was like, yo, are you for real right now? Like, is this real life? Okay. So I got warrior woman. Have you answered your deepest calling? And so when you think about hopes and fears, I just feel like, yeah, my hope is to kind of be this warrior woman. Like I don't want to limit myself. And I've talked about this before on, in my get to know me series on my YouTube channel. Just, um, I don't know. It's just very like, I don't want to be limited. I don't want to be limited in the niche that, you know, I have a lot of passions and they are kind of diverse and different. And I just don't think that I really want to zone in on one when I love all of them. And so to me, yeah, it is kind of like taking on this warrior woman type position because it's like, it's a lot to do when you're focusing on so many different things, but I know I could do it. And so, you know, it's a hope, but it's also a fear of what if I like can't pull this off, you know, all those limiting beliefs that, you know, like this card was saying right before it, that what I need to let go, like I need to let go of this in order to get to this, which is crazy. So, I'm going to get the book out and tell you what Warrior Woman is, which it is an inquiry card. Page 56. Okay, here we go. You are here for a reason. You are being called to bravely pave a path. Have you answered your highest and deepest calling? Living a heart and soul led life is not a fluffy and smooth sailing. Living a heart and soul led life requires courage to triumph over fear. To soften our fears. Oh, not to soften. I, I glanced down and combined words. It says, so often our fears are the gatekeepers to our greatest gifts. And the more resistance we have towards answering a call, call, the more important it is to our soul's growth. Sometimes fear is an indication that we are facing the right way. Joan of Arc was known for her courage and her famous line, I am not afraid. I was born to do this. But the thing about courage is that it is not possible without fear. So if you're feeling afraid, what is needed is courage and courage comes from living from the heart. Think of your fears as opportunities to expand rather than things that are holding you hostage. If you look at your fears in this light, then and uncomfortable as uncomfortable as it might feel, it's actually a sign that you are on the right track. Have you answered your deepest calling? That is just, insane okay so now we are getting to card 11 I really don't know if manual focus is the way to go or if autofocus is the way to go because on my viewfinder I really can't tell what is totally in focus or not and so I can basically never tell until the video is uploaded or I see it on my computer and I'm like shit that was not in focus card 11 
so hard for me to tell on the viewfinder, but I'm going to switch it anyway because I'm going to bring the cl card closer to you. Okay, so card 11 is the position of potential outcome. So what is the potential outcome if I understand and move forward with every other position that this card or this spread was telling me? And I got for the final outcome... Deep replenishment, retreat, rest, and be held. So at first thought, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Retreat, rest, and be held. Potential outcome. I mean, to me, it seems like I need to be working hard. I need to be going after what I want. I need to release things that aren't serving me and go after all these passions and, you know, uh, so a, a deep replenishment, I was like, you know, resting. I don't really see that. But who knows how far in the future this could be. This could basically mean even a, a, a resting of, you know, all of the, these chaotic thoughts and feelings I was feeling like this whole, the whole week that I was doing this spread. Um, you know, maybe just give your mind a rest and retreat so that this can so that this can be the outcome and that's kind of what I've been doing I've been reading a book I've been journaling I've been you know just watching other youtubers and just kind of like planning content instead of forcing myself to be stressed about editing content I've just kind of retreated and been a little hermit and I definitely think it's gonna help me in the long run because I want to plan my content officially uh, efficiently to provide, you know, good thought out content for everyone. And so I also thought at first glance, you know, this could be after the fact, maybe after all the hard work is going to come this, you know, retreat, like maybe like work hard now so that later on you actually can retreat and enjoy your life more. So that's kind of what I thought off first impression and I'll show you what it says in the guidebook let's see so deep replenishment is an action card 64 The most selfless thing you can do is to fill up your own inner well. When we are running around half filled, we subconsciously look to things and people around us to give us the nourish nourishment and nurturing that we so deeply crave. Nothing can grow in barren lands. You are no good to anyone if you are running on empty. The feminine is bountiful, fertile, and rich. Tend to your own well and watch as the amount you have to give multiplies. If your inner well isn't full, you will find yourself craving things from the outside world to fill it. This is our body's instinctive way of reaching for the grounding and nurturing that we are not allowing ourselves. What nourishes you? What refuels your body? What is nectar for your soul? What brings you back to life? What is your secret medicine? What makes you feel abundant and fertile, overspilling with life? It may be gardening, arranging flowers, getting a massage, using luxurious essential oils, snuggling up on the couch, hiking, sipping a good coffee at your favorite cafe, attending a women's circle, reading about sacred sites, spontaneous bike rides, walking along the beach, or yin yoga. What nourishes you is your medicine. When you give yourself the medicine that you need to be nourished, you nourish all those around you, for there is more than enough to go around. And it says, as far as the action card, do something that deeply replenishes you today. So, let me get this back in focus here. So 
So basically, potential outcome. Like I said, you know, eventually maybe I will feel, uh, you know, like I can take a take a break after I actually really start following my soul's calling. But this actually is what I did basically this whole past week. I've been doing stuff that fills my soul up. I've been exercising. I have been journaling. I've been reading a book. I'm planning content. So even though I actually haven't really edited and released content in the background, I'm working on content and I'm moving forward towards what things I want to get done for my end of the year goals. And so it really has been a deep replenishment. It has been so nice to not be stressed out about getting stuff out on YouTube and all that just kind of enjoying working with, you know, myself and like getting this reset ready in order for this to all take place. And so I really wanted to share that with you during that video the other day that I did when I was talking about all the things going on in my life that were just like totally crazy one thing after another. And so I did this spread and I just thought it was just almost like the reassurance I needed and so I just wanted to share it with anyone that may be feeling the same way. Maybe this message was meant for you too. You know, I definitely believe that when you click on certain types of videos on YouTube, especially if it has to do with cards, that you were meant to hear that message. I mean, for the most part, even sometimes when I listen to it and it doesn't really make sense, after the fact, I'll think about it and I was like, you know what? That totally, totally makes sense. So thanks so much for coming through this journey with this new spread. Um, not new spread, <laughs> this new deck. I do have an unboxing video coming and um, I have a lot of unboxing videos coming actually because that is something I'm really looking forward to bringing to my channel in the future is talking about cards and teaching you guys about cards and how they can be helpful and useful in your life. And so I'm really happy to share that spread with you. So really mean a lot to me if you gave this video a like. It does help the channel out and also if you want to share it with someone that you think needed to hear this go ahead, feel free to share it with anyone that you think might have had to hear a message from the Work Your Light Oracle. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I talk about F words here on my channel, flying festivals, fashion, food, fitness, fine art, fulfill it yourself mentality, and basically do it yourself improvement projects. And then I am now going to be introducing a whole subsection series about card divination. So Definitely subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Peace.